Hello everyone and welcome back to the EDH Jank Center, your source for everything Commander and everything Jank. I am your host Jordan or Prairies, you can call me either, and today we have a very spicy deck tech for you. As you can tell from that last sentence, I am very excited because I ran out of breath. And the reason I'm so excited is not only is this a personal deck of mine, I built this for $20. Well, $20 and 19 cents without basic lands, but... You get the picture. And you saw the thumbnail. The deck in question is Delina Wild Mage. This is a mono red aggro strategy group slug in our way to a win. With a little bit of luck involved, we will be dice rolling our way to dealing a ton of damage to all of our opponents at once. Now listen, we are not gonna be talking about efficiency in this deck. That is not what we care about. This is for $20 and it's a commander fully based around luck. So you won't be winning every time. We'll put it like that. But you will be having fun every time. Oh, and by the way, if you want more of these the uh, the patreons in the description we got lots of cool benefits for patrons including a patron only discord that's available to all tiers of my patreon so if that sounds appealing to you go check out that link in the description all your support helps me make more videos like this for you guys anyways let's move on to our commander delina wild mage is three in a red legendary creature elf shaman from adventures in the forgotten realms whenever delina wild mage attacks choose target creature you control then roll a d20 if you roll a 1 through 14 you create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature except it's not legendary and it has exile this creature at end of combat. If you roll a 15 through 20, create one of those tokens and roll again, and she's a 3-2. So I already went over it a little bit, but we are going to be dealing damage to each of our opponents ideally in this deck. We've stuffed it with creatures that deal damage to each opponent on ETB. We've got lots of ways to copy it, lots of ways to get Delina in for damage so that we can keep attacking with her. Uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, first card up is Sanctuary Blade, two colorless mana artifact equipment from Commander 2020. As Sanctuary Blade becomes attached to a creature, choose a color. Equipped creature gets plus two plus oh and has protection from the last chosen color it has equipped three so this is just one of my favorite equipment in general but i love it in this build we need ways to get delina in for combat damage because when she attacks her ability triggers but people can just block her and kill her so we need to be able to attack with her freely without any worries about her dying and i don't know about you but i heard protections like pretty good so basically as stated in this handy dandy description i got from google if we equip sanctuary blade to delina and gave her protection from blue she couldn't be blocked by blue creatures dealt damage by blue creatures or enchanted or otherwise affected by blue cards and on top of that, she gets a power buff? Dude, come on. Power buff. Yeah, I hit a pretty high note there. Look at that. Anyways, moving on to the next card, which is Brazen Dwarf, one in a red creature dwarf shaman from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Whenever you roll one or more dice, Brazen Dwarf deals one damage to each opponent, and it's a 1-3. Super chill, super easy tech here. We're going to be rolling dice. We want to deal damage when we roll dice. What's there not to love? And he's five cents. Come on, Short Kings represent, dude. Let's go. Okay, next up on the docket, we got Beetleback Chief, two red, red creature goblin warrior. This one's from Jumpstart. When Beetleback Chief enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens tokens and it's a 2-2. So on top of group slugging, we need to have some other support cards, other things that do stuff when they ETB. This guy is great because for four mana, we get three creatures and this only multiplies when we start making copies of it with Delina. Now, what's great about Beetleback Chief and other effects like this is while the copy will exile itself at the end of combat, the tokens that it creates stay. And these little guys are valuable for two reasons. One, we can attack with them, but two, we can also use them as chump blockers. In aggro strategies, we are going to be tapped out a lot of the time and it's really useful to have things that protect us on the crackback from our opponents. All right, moving on to this seven cent clockwork fox. Three colorless mana artifact creature fox from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. When clockwork fox leaves the battlefield, you draw two cards and each opponent draws a card and it's a three two. So in order to keep this deck $20, we have to get creative with our card draw and our ramp. So not only is clockwork fox a three mana three two that's great for attacking already, but when it ETBs, we get to draw two cards. And while each of our opponents also get to draw a card, we're living fast, not responsible okay and for seven cents it's great monetary value and look how cute anyways let's move on all right next up is fanatic of mogus three and a red creature minotaur shaman from theros when fanatic of mogus enters the battlefield it deals damage to each opponent equal to your devotion to red each red pip in the mana cost of permanence you control counts toward your devotion to red and it's a four two now i know you saw the thumbnail and i hope you know that i would never lie to you i have this deck in my own collection personally and i have one on turn five with this card this ladies and gentlemen is our quintessential finisher basically you're gonna have a bunch of permanents on your battlefield that are red they have red pips in their mana costs. If you can make enough copies of Fnatic of Mogus on top of combat damage, pow, you're in for the win. Now, does this turn five win condition rely on luck? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But at the end of the day, who doesn't love a good roll of the dice? 
All right, let's move on to Patron of the Arts, two in a red creature dragon noble from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. When Patron of the Arts enters the battlefield or dies, create a treasure token. It's an artifact with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color, and it's a 3-1. So again, in keeping with the $20 budget, I wanted to get creative with how we got our card draw and our ramp. This is the ramp part. So clearly we love that it ETBs and we get a treasure. That's great. However, I want to point out something that I initially overlooked when I added it to the deck. That 3-1 body is pretty formidable when it's attacked and Patron of the Arts creates a treasure token not only on ETB, but when it dies. So if we amass an army of these dragon nobles and attack, unless our opponents don't block any of them, we'll be getting some extra treasures on their deaths as well. And for a 12 cent card, I think that's some pretty insane value. All right, moving on to Markov Enforcer, four red red creature vampire soldier from Commander Crimson Vow. Whenever Markov Enforcer or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, Markov Enforcer fights up to one target creature an opponent controls. Whenever a creature dealt damage, damage by Markov Enforcer this turn dies, create a blood token. It's an artifact with pay one and tap. Discard a card, sacrifice this artifact to draw a card, and it's a 6-6. How are we going to remove creatures in mono red for $20? Pow, I got you, baby. So without the ETB synergy, which I'll get to in a second, this is just a 6 mana 6-6 six, six that comes in, removes something on the board, gets you a blood token. But something I wanted to point out to you guys is something that my friend Eric pointed out to me. Eric is dope. Shout out to Eric. He runs at Guillaume's Kitchen on Instagram. You should give him a follow. So let's say you cast Markov enforcer you snipe someone's i don't know dranith magistrate then you attack with delina and create a copy of markov enforcer when the copy enters it has the same name as your original markov enforcer so it's going to trigger the original markov enforcer's ability again on top of its own etb ability so if you can chain enough of these together you can take out some really big creatures or just do like a pseudo board wipe and look a 6-6 six, six body is nothing to laugh at i mean look at that mace and that 6-6 six, six power toughness will synergize with our next card warstorm surge five in red enchantment this one's from Commander 2019. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Pretty simple tech here, guys. We're going to be having a ton of creatures ETBing. We might as well take advantage of that and dish out a bunch of damage. On top of everything else we're doing, combine this with Torbran or Angrath's Marauders, and we are cooking. Next up, we got Mirror March, five and a red enchantment from Ravnica Allegiance. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For each flip you won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. I know, I know, I know, calm down, stop yelling. It's a coin flip card in a dice rolling deck. I get it. However, kiddos, this is about redundancy. I've talked about it before on this channel. I think it's important when you're building a deck to have other cards that do the same effect as your commander or as your general strat so that if your big pieces get sniped like Delina in our case we can still play this card and still do our strategy all right we've reached that time kiddos it's our last card of the day it's call in a professional two in a red instant from streets of new capenna players can't gain life this turn damage can't be prevented this turn call in a professional deals three damage to any target shield counters don't prevent this damage as they're removed streets of new capenna has so many bomb choices Choices, but my god, I love this cheeky little card. In aggro builds, our mortal enemies are life gain decks and fog effects. This card neutralizes both of those things at instant speed, it deals three damage itself, and it's only four cents. I mean, this is, this is the, yeah, this is great. And just like that, guys, we're at the end of another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you would put in a Delina Wild Mage build. Did I miss anything? If you had 10 extra dollars, what would you add to this build to make it better? I'm always down in the comment section interacting with you guys, so come on down and have a chat with me. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next video.